By the end of this video, you're going to have a good understanding of for loops and how to use them in Braze. But don't worry if you're not a liquid expert, I'm going to start at the beginning and break each thing down step by step, because it's way more important that we can all learn this together. For reference, a for loop is a set of commands that runs over and over again with whatever variable you feed it until it runs out of things to process, or until you tell it to stop. A loose analogy might be baking, where you might take the dough and knead it and let it rise, and then you might go back and knead it again and let it rise. Imagine that's like the loop running through. And then we might say, unless it's done that two times already, then put it in a pan and put it in the oven. So we run the loop twice, stop, and move on to the next process. That's essentially how a for loop's working. Now this video started because we had a problem. A lot of our users have two first names in the first name field in our database, and we wanted to find a way to capitalize the first letter of each of those first names. So say hello to for loops. Now be sure to also open Braze or any other code editor and type along because muscle memory is just super important when you're doing these kind of tasks. Over to the code. First of all, we need to get a user's first name and assign it to a variable. By assigning it to a variable, it makes it easy to work with or modify, and therefore it becomes variable or changeable. And to do this, we use assign. This assigns an object that we choose to a set name known as a variable. First, we type a curly brace and a percentage sign, and then a percentage sign and a curly brace. So our opening and closing brackets. Anywhere there's a percentage sign and a curly bracket, let's braze know there's gonna be some logic in the liquid, something it needs to do. And we type assign, and then we can give it whatever name we want that makes sense to us. So in my case, I'm going to call it first name. And what do we want first name to equal? In our case, we wanna work with the first name. So we're gonna use the standard attribute first name, which is curly great. You might find it in the list here when you're typing that. We'll push enter. And there we have our first name is now assigned to the term first name. If I wanted to see whether that had worked or not, I could put two curly braces, write the name of my variable, which is first name, two more curly braces. And I'll see that it's gone yellow here, which means I've written that correctly. And if I test that now, I've put some first names in here. You'll see over in this side, it says Sarah Jane, which is what I've actually stored as the first name. And now I've stored them without capital letters, just so we can see this example working. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that there the whole time so that whatever's what if we're working on actually prints out? Now that we have a user's name assigned to the first name variable, we can do some cool things with it. In our case, where a user might have two first names stored in the first name variable, we can split them apart so we can work on them separately. And the liquid term we actually use for this is called split, so it makes total sense. And we can tell it exactly where we want to split the first name object. So here we have our assigned first name already in there. And then we put another curly brace and a percentage sign, and a curly brace and a percentage sign to close that to say some, some logic going on in here. And we can write assign names. So now we, the reason we do this is we're going to store whatever we split into this term names, the same way we assign things to the first name equals first name, because this is where we've stored our first name. So we're going to use that. We put this vertical line, I think it's called a pipe or something like that. But anyway, in Braze, it's called a filter. So we want to do something with these first names. We want to split them. There's a split term, a colon. And where do we want to split them? We want to split them at wherever there's a space in the first name. So we put two uh, talking marks, whatever you want to call them, with a space in between to say wherever there's a space in any stored first names, I want you to split them here and then we've already closed that so we assign the names to the first name variable and then in this line we are taking the first name and splitting them apart wherever there is space which is what we've shown here if there is no space meaning that there is no second name it will only output one name so if there's only one name in this list and no space after it it would know to stop there if there were three names it would do all three of them and it would actually the ending result would actually look like this if you could see it it would be names bracket uh, equals We'd have a square bracket to say it's part of array. It'd be Sarah comma Jane. So they're actually stored like this now inside the system. But when you output it, which is if we write names, we want to see what's in that array and test it. You'll see it shows it without the comma. So we have Sarah without the comma and Jane. But we know they're broken up and stored in that list the way we want them to. Save this way, we can work on each name one at a time. And this is where the for loop will come in very soon. And the last thing we need to do before the for loop is create a variable to store all the results in from our for loop. So curly brace percentage sign, percentage sign curly brace, let braze know there's some logic occurring. Uh, we need to do a sign again, because we're creating a new variable. And I'm going to call mine, you can call these whatever you want, capitalized first names, because I like to write things that make sense to me if for some reason I forget what I was doing. And I put two of these talking marks just 
just like that no space in between just to say hey i want to create an empty variable here with nothing in it and we're going to use that later on to restore our names now if we were to take this capitalized first names variable and we'll just put it down here and we'll output that and see what's in there if you look over this side it says your message because there's nothing in there brace can't find anything to put in there whereas if we change that back to names where we'd split these names before and rerun that again we can see sarah and jane are back in there again so that's that's all working as we would expect all right we're going to leave names here and we're going to update that as we go uh, to anything that we're currently using so i can render that out and show you what's happening so let's get started on our for loop first thing we need to do is actually create our for loop as you can imagine we start with curly brace percentage sign percentage sign curly brace just to say there's some logic happening when it close and i'll just write this out and then i'll explain what is happening and then i'm going to also do the same thing again and i'm going to do end for to show where the end is so this is the start and the end of the for loop the for and the in terms are always the same and the last term needs to be the exact variable that we actually want to loop over in our case we want to loop over this names variable where we stored each first name but the second term name can be any term you want that is meaningful to you it essentially becomes the new variable used inside the loop i'm going to write out in text just a bit of an example so you can see exactly what this loop is doing by this term so we've got four name so the name in this case would be sarah because it's the first of the first names in for sarah in names for sarah in sarah jane it'd be do x y z so we're essentially telling it so for sarah in the term sarah jane which is the whole first name i want you to do these things and then when the loop ends it's going to come back to the start and then it's going to go for Jane in Sarah Jane. So it works on Sarah. Now it's working on Jane. Do the same number of things. And that's essentially what this for name in names is saying. For each name in this names array, do this number of things. And then go back to the start, pick the next name, and do the same number of things until you've run out of names to work with. And last of all, just so we can see what's happened in this loop, because we're going to feed it back into this capitalized first names variable, we're just going to move that term down here. So anytime something happens in this loop, we'll be able to see the output of that. So we're just going to update that term. For now, if we test that, you'll see that it won't actually make any difference. We'll just end up with an empty string because there's nothing in there. But say I put in here, maybe I'll put first name. We say we want that loop to run over first names and I test that. It's just going to spit out all this. It's going to spit out Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane. It's repeating it twice <laughs> with those terms. At this point, we can basically ask the loop to do anything we want with each of those individual names. But to solve our current problem, we wanted each of those names to start with a capital letter. Let's have a look. So what we want to do is we want to capitalize each first name to do that. We have percentage sign curly braces to let it know there's some logic happening. We're going to create a new variable where we want to store each capitalized name. As they get done, I'm just going to call this capitalize first name. Instead of names, I'm going to call it first name because we're doing one at a time. So this is a new variable. And we want to take name. So whichever name's getting fed in, in this case, it would be Sarah, and then it would be Jane. And we do the pipe filter, vertical line to tell it there's something happening. And we want to capitalize. And essentially what that's doing is it's taking each, uh, each name and capitalizing it and storing it in this variable. Now, might be able to show you what's actually happening there. So you'll see it's output Jane, it's capitalized Jane. And you're probably like, hold on a sec, why is it just say Jane? Well, what's actually happening is when it goes through this loop, it's storing, it's taking Sarah and putting a capital letter on it and storing it in capitalized first name. And then it's going through and getting Jane, putting a first letter on it, the capital letter on it, and it's storing it in capitalized first name, but it doesn't add it to the end of that. It just overwrites what was in there before, which can be use really useful when you want to overwrite variables as you go. But in this case, Sarah is happening and then it's getting overwritten with Jane. Now to fix that problem, this is where we use the term append. And append is essentially like adding something on the end of something that already exists rather than overwriting it. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with percentage sign, curly braces, uh, and I should mention because it's green we know that it's saying that's closed off and how it should be and we're going to assign we're going to assign something to a variable as we're doing the whole time we're going to assign this capitalized first names because this is where we want to start storing each name as we use them 
So we want to store them in there. And what do we want to store in there? We want to store in there each of those, whatever's already in there. So we want to store whatever's already in there. If it's empty, it's just storing empty and that's fine. And to the end of that, we want to append or add. And we want to append or add each first name as it's capitalized. So what this is essentially saying is take this empty variable that's up here and store inside it anything that's already in there. If it's empty, just nothing. But if there's Sarah's already in there, it's still Sarah. But instead of overwriting that, now I want you to add on the next name that goes through this loop on the end of that. So before, as we were overwriting and Sarah was overwritten with Jane, now we're not overwriting, we're adding on the end. Now I'm going to print out what's in this loop and I would be expecting now to see both names, probably with no space in between. Sarah, Jane. So what we have is Sarah went through the for loop, got added to the uh, capitalized first names variable. And then Jane went through, instead of writing over, it got appended or added to the end. But you can see it gets appended or added with no space. But what you notice now is because they've both run through the loop, they both have a capital letter on them, which is pretty cool, considering over here they don't have capital letters. And if I wanted to, I could put, uh, let's go Ruby, and see, gets added with a capital letter. Sophie, capital letter. So anything that's going into this loop is getting fed through and capitalized. So we know our loop's working. The problem is we don't have spaces in between, which is not super handy when we want to output them. And that's something we're going to work on now. Now this is where things get really exciting because you notice there was no space between things. So we're going to use the term unless to let the loop know to keep adding a space to the end of each name to create that space in between each name, unless there's no more names left. I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to type curly brace percentage sign, percentage sign curly brace, let them know there's some logic. We go unless, so unless this happens, for loop dot last. So unless it's the last thing in the for loop, we want it to keep going. So a bit more logic here. We are going to take, we're going to assign capitalize first name. So we're going to work with this variable, the same variable we're working with before equals whatever was already in there, same as we did up here. But this time we're going to append. What do you think we're going to append to add a space in between each word? Yep, a space. So basically what we're saying is we want to keep looping through and adding a space after each first name that works on. So Sarah, space, and then work on. And then you always need to basically end anything you've started. So we need to end our unless. And you notice the end four sits outside of that because this unless is sitting inside this loop. It's running over and over inside this loop. So what's happening now is it's going through and it's looking to see if each term is the last term in the array and it knows not to do whatever's inside, um, inside this statement here. So it's going, is Sarah the last term inside this array of terms? So we have Sarah and Jane. Sarah is not. So unless Sarah is last, which it isn't, we assign capitalized first names, Sarah, that already has a capital letter, and we put a space after it. So what's coming out of this now is Sarah space. And then it goes back to the top of the for loop and it works on Jane with a capital letter. And then it gets here and goes, unless Jane is the last name in this loop, add a space to the end. But Jane is the last name in this loop. So it's saying, oh, it is the last name. So skip this step now. So it keeps working through until the last one and adding a space. So if I run that now, you should see, hopefully Sarah, was it last in the array? No. So I'll add a space, which is here. Jane, was it last in the loop? Yes. So there's no space on the end. But say I go and put Ruby back in, it will go, oh, add a space to the end of Jane. But Ruby is now the last term in this group, this array. Oh, I won't add a space there. And that's really important because we could make it automatically add a space to every one of these each time. But then when you go to print that liquid out inside um, a campaign or something you're running, the last first name would always have a space after it and you'd constantly be having to deal with it. Doing it this way, you don't end up with a space on the end and that's where that unless term becomes really handy. And I could honestly, I could honestly keep adding to this and it would just keep working, you know? 
Look at that. It just keeps adding spaces because it's going, is this the last one? No. Nope. Well, I'll keep adding spaces until I know any different. So I'll go back to Sarah Jane, which we're working with, and we can see that is working a treat. So when we think about this loop now, it's actually pretty amazing because we've gone through, we've taken each term one by one because we've split them out at the start. We've gone, take that term, do these things to it. So capitalize it, add a space on it, stick it back in the main array, and then take the next term, go through, capitalize it, add a space to it if it needs it, unless it's the last one, and add it back to that array. If you think about that, now we've done it to capitalize two first names, but essentially you could run a limitless number of terms in here and you could split whole sentences out into single words and do whatever you want with them. But just the possibility of knowing that that, that kind of power is there makes for loops incredibly powerful if you want to do lots of little things to individual parts of sentences or run really complicated liquid over and over again without having to paste it in and paste it in and paste it in. You could just run each, each piece through a for loop over and over again. What's amazing is not only do you now have a new tool in your liquid toolbox, you've done an amazing job getting this phone. You should be super proud of yourself and give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you got some value from this video and please leave me any feedback in the comments. I do read it all. I will answer any questions you have and I look forward to seeing you at another great video like this soon.